Oh, hey guys, this is Alan Luke here, coming to you in Toronto. This is actually exceptionally hot today. I uh, just got back in. Uh, and this is another one of our awesome hangouts. So, quick story about myself. Uh, my name is Alan again. I uh, was born actually in Hong Kong, and I came to Canada when I was 12 years old. Um, I still remember uh, back then when my, my whole family uh, just arrived in Canada. You know, I did not know any English because I was born in Hong Kong. My, I was actually, you know, born and raised using Cantonese, right? So when I came to Canada, I was, you know, totally lost. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, when I go to school, um, people, like, people were trying to, you know, had me say bad words in English, right? <laughs> you know, so, like, you know, uh, so it wasn't really fun, you know, and, um, um, I think I think this whole um, this whole thing with you know with my parents coming into you know coming to Canada was because they realized that in 1997 that was the year when uh, Hong Kong is actually given back to China. So they thought that there was going to be a lot of you know political issues and economy issues. So that's why we actually kind of all immigrated into Canada. I mean, I believe my parents has, has given up a lot for me because, um, you know, in Hong Kong, they actually had a really, uh, you know, really a good position, uh, you know, working as, you know, working as different management jobs. But they believe that, you know, in Canada, I would get a better education, uh, see my brother. So that's why we, the whole family, decided to immigrate into, into Canada. Um, and, you know, during high school years and university years, I was... Um, I, I couldn't say I was a really good student, you know, I, I often come, you know, skip classes, you know, and you know, not do homeworks, right, and all, and all that good stuff, right. I was actually really kind of lost in life, right. My parents really wanted me to uh, go to school, get good grades, right. You know, they wanted me to actually become a lawyer. Um, so I did, during my high school year, they actually, you know, pursue different uh, legal courses and actually uh, even beginning of uh, university. But becoming a lawyer actually never really fascinated me, um, you know, because we all know that what lawyer represents, but actually that never really was into, like I was never into that kind of thing. So I did business uh, in, in my undergraduate year, and, you know, like most people, you know, when you get out of university, I mean, what do you really do, right? You know, you probably won't get something that is really related to what you're studying. Uh, when, you, when you get out of university, you just pretty much just, find something that, you know, that someone happened to hire you, right? Uh, but after university, I did get into a consulting firm, which, uh, again, I hated. <laughs> I mean, the money was great. Uh, you know, the title was pretty pretty good. But, I mean, I never enjoy doing, you know, just the day-to-day -day actions, right? I was, even in my job, I was, like, daydreaming. I was, you know, thinking about, oh, what else can I do, right? You know, browsing the internet and looking at like travel sites, right? Just really not really in the mindset of working. Um, so around that time, I remember that I was um, on the internet looking for, okay, what's out there? Is it eBay? Can I start, you know, like a online e-commerce business? So a lot of thoughts kind of happen, uh, but, um, you know, I did get into a little eBay business, but it failed miserably, you know. I was actually importing some goods from uh, from China, and then actually trying to resell it on online. Uh, but due to inventory issues, you know, supplier issues, but that failed miserably. I actually lost lost some money there. Uh, so at that time, I was actually exposed to uh, the online marketing, you know, the make money online niche, uh, which is actually buying ebooks and actually uh, creating your own product and actually selling on ClickBank. I still remember that one email. I forgot. I th I think it was um, um what's his name uh, Mike Felsen or some someone you know one of those guys. Okay, uh, I got an email saying that hey you can literally create your own product. Uh, you know since it's digital product that there's no shipping, you just put it online and people will, will buy and you know you make a lot of money. So I got into that and then I also got into some you know Google assets to build a website. So there's a lot of stuff going on that I was jumping from programs to programs and buying different courses. But most of the time, I was very excited when I got the course. Um, but after when I read it, I didn't really do anything. I know some, some, I did some action, but I was never really uh, into, you know, taking massive action. I just, you know, just study it and okay, and I jump in on the next thing and hoping to find a, the big secret, right? You know, jumping from deal to deal. 
you know, the shiny object syndrome, right? So uh, the last few years, it has been like that, you know, programs and programs, and then, you know, going into network marketing companies, you know, weight loss products, some juice deals, uh, and nothing really stood out, okay? Nothing, I mean, made some money here and there. I remember one network marketing company, the whole year, I made like, like nine fifty. I mean, that was a uh, <laughs> that was pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, the whole year, I made nine fifty, and um, even though I had to pay auto ship every month, so in a way, I'm actually losing a lot of money. So um, I was very fortunate and, uh, last year when I got into the Empower Network. Um, it was I got I got in around July, but I never really looked into any of, any other materials. Never plugged into the system until around December. And the moment I decided to do that, I realized that, okay, you know what? Because the reason why I start to pay attention was I start seeing people making money on Facebook. You know, people posting, oh, they made this much commission. So it kind of got my attention. And I've realized that, you know, a lot of ordinary people are making money, not just the gurus, right? So that kind of really got my attention. And I started plugging in um, to... Uh, to the Monday night call, okay, which, you know, if you guys are watching this right now, you got to jump on to the Monday night call, which is going to happen in about half an hour. When I when I listened to that one call, when David Wood was talking, he was talking about building a dream, right, and all that stuff. I mean, that really got my mind moving, okay? I never really experienced um, that kind of emotion uh, before. It's just that, you know, um, but David Wood really does you know, hit it on the head there. And that's why I started to pay attention to Empower Network. And I got my mentor, uh, you know, my sponsor, and I said, hey, you know what, I'm ready now. Uh, what can you do to show me what, to, you know, what's the next step? So I, I plug in, uh, he showed me, you know, what he's doing. So I plug in right away, I took massive action. And it was December, uh, and we had a big event back in January in Austin. So I said, okay, you know what, I've, you know, I don't really believe in these events, but, I might as well just see what's, you know, you know, what this whole Empower Network is all about. So I jumped into the Austin event, okay, with, with Blind. You know, like I didn't know what I was going to, you know, what I was going to expect, right? I thought it was just a rah, rah, you know, hype uh, kind of event. But I got, I got there, wow, I'm a, I mean, everything was different than I thought. Um, a lot of the leaders are very open. They're very down to earth. They share with me what they're doing. They share, they share with me why I was struggling. And I met a lot of ordinary people as well. And that really got my belief system up. That now looking back, you know, all these, you know, past several years, I was struggling. I was, you know, I was blaming others. I was, I was just doing all these negative things. I mean, it wasn't really because of the product wasn't working or the company wasn't working or the content it was really myself. That when I realized that, the moment I realized that the problem is myself, that I identified that, you know, hey, it was me not doing, not taking massive action, not having a dream, not having hope in myself, and not hope, not realizing I have also have impact in people. That's when I start realizing that I have the ability to plug into Empower Network, to actually do certain actions that I was taught to do, and take massive action every single day, daily consistent action, and also plugging my team in to the exact same steps, I never realized that just by doing these steps, I can achieve success. And the moment I start earning commission, obviously my belief level go up, and I share with my team what I was doing, and basically that's how I start to have duplication. That's how I start to build a team. I've never was able to build any team in any network marketing company. Maybe I got like two people, but they quit like, you know, in, in like two days. But here, because of what, what an amazing system we've got here, right? The, the duplication, the Facebook groups, you know, the, the different video uh, marketing challenges, right? I mean, that's how everybody started to plug in and everybody starts to have some kind of commitment every single day. And even these kind of hangout here, I mean, we have been doing this for the last, uh, you know, 40, 50 days now, right? Just just really just doing this daily daily hangouts. It just really got my belief level up and really, I mean, I've seen all of the panel here have massive transformed. Emily, Tam, you know, Tian, um, and Steven. I mean, these guys just literally transform massively, even for myself. And now it's like I'm really grateful to have plugged into Empire Network and being able to travel to all the events. You know, we went to Austin, Chicago, 
Uh, we actually, you know, went to Miami two weeks ago and really just hang out on cruises, uh, you know, talking to leaders, learning about communication, uh, you know, a different, different awesome skills to boost our business to the next level. So now is, you know, in, in the next 90 days, I mean, I have really big things that I really want to do is I would, our, my goal is to be able to earn about, uh, you know, $20,000 a month uh, in 90 days and I'll be able to travel to Asia, okay? Because uh, uh, as I told you, I was from Hong Kong and I've, I've always wanted to go back. Uh, you know, my last time I was back in Hong Kong was about five years ago. So just five years, I've never gone back. So I really miss, uh, you know, my, my, my grandmother, my uncle, my aunt, and all my cousins, right? So I really want to go back and travel and really just explore not only Hong Kong, but maybe, uh, you know, rest of Asia, like, you know, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, you know, Vietnam, right? Vietnam. I mean, I've never gone to Vietnam, and I and, and I know that you know uh, we have panels here that are from Vietnam. So I mean, I really want to go travel there and experience, uh, you know, the the online marketing lifestyle. That I'm able to go travel while my business is still running on autopilot. I mean, that's ultimately what what I want to do. But also, I want to actually start, um, you know, doing more things with, with, with a charity, right? I, I I've always have a passion in actually empowering youth. Uh, to uh, basically get into entrepreneurship, actually starting something, um, you know, when they're when they're youth, right? So um, I mean, that's something I'm kind of passionate as well, and I also want to start doing more in terms of you know charity stuff, right? So giving more money to charity, which I can impact them, maybe maybe build uh, schools, let's say in China, right? But if I have money to do this kind of thing. Um, you know, that's awesome, right? Most people have this scarcity mindset that, hey, money is evil, uh, you know, uh, p people who are rich are greedy. I mean, hey, I mean, these are just negative mindset. I mean, if you believe that money is evil, then give them away. Give them away to charity and give them away so that you can impact people uh, and actually help them um, to better the world. I mean, you know, what's better thing to, to do than uh, you know, giving money out there to, to help other people and impact their lives. So that's the kind of thing I really see myself in 90 days uh, doing doing this kind of thing, you know, traveling without worrying that, hey, you know, what's going to happen this month because um, I'm actually not going to work, you know, right? Because right now and, you know, before I was actually working for money, right? So and I the work, and if I don't work, then money don't come in. But I want to build the Empowered Network business to a point that, there's so much duplication that there's so much people on my team making money that there's so much duplication and so much uh, residual income coming in that I'm able to do this kind of thing. And I can still, while I'm traveling, I can still provide training, I can still do hangouts, I can still impact and um, you know transform all my, my teammates. Um, so, I mean, that's the kind of lifestyle that I've always envisioned myself into. I mean, uh, when I was in Miami two weeks ago, I've never visualized myself hanging out on a yacht with six, seven, eight figures earner. But I mean, just really plugging into the Empower Network and taking action, I was able to make that happen. And also was able to meet all these amazing panels today. So that's just a quick story about myself and where I want to go in 90 days. Um, so I'm going to pass the, the floor to M, where she'll share some awesome, awesome stuff on what her goal is in her next 90 days. Thanks, Alan, and uh, thanks for sharing your story and uh, where you're going to be 90 days from now. But definitely, guys, if you are listening to this, you are at the right time and at the right place. Um, and, you know, if, if, if traveling the world, having a business on automation, on autopilot for you, or ha having money coming in while you're uh, hanging out with your friends on a yacht, or um, going to the beaches of the world, and and just, or you know, or you even just spending time with with your loved ones is something you've always looked for um, or, or, or to have. Then this portable business is definitely uh, one of the best. I mean, the best vehicle that I've ever known in my business career. Um, and you have if you haven't clicked on the link below yet and make sure you do fill out that form and lock arms with with whoever invited you here um, now it, you know it's awesome that that Alan would mention traveling is 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 
something that he he's always wanted to do visiting Vietnam. I was fortunate enough to visit Vietnam like two, three times actually. And Vietnam is a, is a, is a beautiful place. If y'all didn't be didn't go there yet, I, I strongly recommend it. If you want to learn about some some spots, make sure you you contact me and I'll I'll let you know where where's the best uh, spot to eat because I'm a huge foodie uh, foodie fan and um, and a, a lot of nice um, scenic places as well. Um, but guys, I'm from I come from a uh, business background of of restaurant. I own restaurants. I I was also in the uh, real estate investing, um, but you know because my passion has always been in, in the food. That's that's how I got um, more into the food industry. Um, I'm going on my fifth, sixth year now. Um, I started with uh, sushi uh, biz, uh, business, and uh, it's going great. But then when I was trying to figure a way to um, market for my brick and mortar business. That's how I eventually fell onto this online business world, and and then I just eventually dug deeper and deeper and found my passion with um, the, the online business because I saw how much more easier it is to duplicate this business and less of a headache and more how much more time uh, it gave me to do whatever I wanted with my family, my friends, my loved ones, to travel more with, with, with my loved ones as well. And, um, you know, here's the thing. As, as much as I love uh, food and, and, and being in, in, in the business, in the restaurant business, what happened was that it, it was so time-consuming. And, you know, I guess you can call me kind of like a control freak as well. I was. Uh, because I, I had my team in place, you know, getting into the, the restaurant industry, when I first started it, I was on my own. It was me and my fiancé. Uh, we opened the one, one, one restaurant at first, and we did everything. You know, he was in the, in the back kitchen cooking things up. I was taking care of the front from the cash register to, um, to, to serving people. And then eventually as we grew, and we become um, more aware of this business venture uh, with the brick and mortar business. That's when we we had we allowed us we started having more clientele, of course, and that's when we started to allow ourselves to um, hire a team of people in place because we saw ourselves kind of like slaving away to this restaurant business. Yes, we started it out as a passion, you know, because he had the 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 the. Uh, the cooking background for at least more than 18 years and I was into management and all that and, and we, we were both really business savvy entrepreneurs and when we threw ourselves into it we saw ourselves like a, it, within a year slaving away to this business working 24 7 not having breaks for each other we couldn't date as much anymore having those uh, <laughs> dates between each other or spending time with our family and friends so eventually we hired a team um, in place to to put them into a restaurant because I knew and um, that of course allowed us more time to spend with our family, our friend, and our friends, and our loved ones, but um, even then, having a team in place was hard to manage because we had standards um, within our restaurant that these 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 employees had to follow. So training them, supervising, managing, making sure they follow our standards was another level to where we felt like we were still kind of slaving away to this business. Although we started having more time with each other and we allowed ourselves to travel like twice a year, it still wasn't enough, you know. But eventually, so eventually uh, we, we started looking for management and anyway, it, it just starts going deeper and deeper. So the more people we had to handle, the more stress. And then uh, we opened a second restaurant and at that point I, um, after the sixth month of that opening of the second restaurant, I was diagnosed with diabetes type 1. Now, that really turned my world upside down. I had to go in and out of the hospital. I couldn't control my body at, at all. 
uh, you know, I kept vomiting, I couldn't eat properly, and I was kind of, I was hospitalized for a while. And my fiance had to manage both restaurants now without me being there. Um, at nighttime, I remember, because I mean, I used to be, I used to sleep at the, at the hospital as well um, for about two to three weeks. I remember him coming at, like at, at 10, 11 p.m. at night to my hospital bed and just sleeping at the end of, of my bed there, hoping and wishing that I was going to get better. And, and I saw how tired he was. He was just tired of, of taking care of everything, having to come to me and making sure that I was doing okay with my health. So eventually we decided to sell the second restaurant with a loss because you know we had to take care of ourselves of our health work first we really had to know that you know time with each other is what matters most and and our life together um, so we sold the second restaurant even though we know we knew how much money we would lose um, it was something we were willing to do because of, of our lives you know time is is so much more important um, than money at that moment so uh, selling that second restaurant, that's when we realized, that's when we knew that we had to get into a business that would allow us to give more time and freedom to ourselves, to spend more um, time with our, our family, our friends, and our loved ones without feeling that, you know, the business is taking over our, our own lives. I mean, yes, we were young, we were really driven, we just wanted to do business, get money. But in the end of the day, you know, when, when your body tells you something and I had to get sick and hospitalized for me to realize that time is so much more um, valuable than anything else in life, then that's when I knew that, you know, I had to do something with my, with, with my life and get into uh, some, another business, another vehicle that, that, would, that, would, that would still help me make me money, but also... Um, like I said many times once again, spend more time with my family, friends, and my loved ones. So that's when, when I found Empower Network, when I knew, when I saw the video, when I saw Dave and Dave and their videos, when I saw it, I knew right then and there that, that this is it. This is what I've always been looking for. And as soon as I saw this opportunity, I grabbed it and I ran with it. I clicked on that yellow button, I registered, and I paid that damn $25 because I knew how much it was, how much more it was worth. I mean, $25, guys, it's literally like a cheap date at the movie theaters and pizza, like with two people. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it's something that you can damn well um, use to really test things out, test see if it works for you because it, it definitely worked for me and a lot of the panels here. Um, that being said, now that you know, I'm going into uh, my, uh, it's, it's been less than a year now since I've been with Empower and it's done wonders for me. I mean, I've traveled um, more than twice a year. I mean, I don't if you guys remember, I said that I used to travel twice a year um, when I was in my restaurant industry. Well, this business allowed me to travel at least five times this year alone. I mean, we're not even done with the year yet, and I've been able to travel five times. Um, going on, I'm going to Denver next month uh, for our next event, um, uh, which I'm super excited about and pumped about as well. And I strongly recommend that you guys find your way there and connect with us there because it's going to be a huge, huge event. We're all top marketers are going to be and you want to surround yourself with the right people with the right mindset who's going to help you bring you to the next level in business um, also not only in business but in life you know because I mean this is definitely a lifesaver for me and I'm also looking to travel more often um, and with with my fiance I mean we're getting married this uh, summer in August by the way I have less than a month I'm super excited, not stressed yet, um, but um, I, I, you know, after the wedding, we were thinking of going on a tour, on 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 traveling tour, um, because we can allow ourselves to, and that's the that's the beauty about this business. So um, that was uh, that was a little bit about my story. If you guys really want to learn more and really want to know um, how much 
want to feel that difference in your life. The diff if if you have this pain, make sure you just and, and I mean if if you're listening to my message, my the sound of my voice right now, and you are leaning towards your computer because you want to learn more. You know that's a, that's a good feeling, and there's a there's a reason to that. If this message resonates with you, it really does mean that you you know you've been looking for something and you found it. Right now, it's all about taking action and clicking on the link below and signing up to this vehicle that's going to help this portable business that that's going to give you whatever you wanted in your life. You know, because once again, you are watching then you are at the right time and the right place. So that being said, I'm going to pass it to Tam here so he can get into his 90-day uh, uh, story. <laughs> and you know what? I, I was Maybe I've been kind of out of track here. I just realized that I was supposed to talk about my 90 days. How, what do I see myself from now? But guys, you know, I've been less than a year, but 90 days from now, of course, I learned. I had a, a huge learning curve. I, I went through a learning curve. It wasn't that huge. Um, it, it it takes me some time, right? But uh, once you are clear on your intentions and why you want to do this business, on what you want to do, then the how tos are going to show up. They're going to come to you, and you know, time just flies by like that. But ninety days from now, I do. Um, I am looking to work with serious. Uh, business entrepreneurs. I, I don't waste time with nobody. Um, I mean, my time is super valuable. Like I said, I take my time really seriously. I mean, to a point where I, you know, nearly died. Uh, <laughs> I take my time seriously. So um, I work with serious people just like Alan and Tam here um, who are serious business entrepreneurs, internet marketers. And uh, I'm also looking to build the one of the biggest teams um, who, and helping people. Helping people is something that I, I've, I've always loved to do um, to help them satisfy their needs in life, whatever that is, and of course to become a better communicator. And that's why I'm here um, on these hangouts to provide as much value as I can in order to help you in your life, give you the right messages, and guide you uh, the right way to. Um, to make the right decisions in life. So hopefully my message and my, my story and my background has um, helped you or has, you know, if you, hopefully you felt related to it as well and that you will make the right decision. So to you, Tam. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I, I am a fan of my time as well. Um, I, before, used to um, just sort of dot around a lot. And, um, you know, I just, anyone who calls me, I would pick up my phone. Anyone who want to just come around to see me, you know, I would allow them to come see me. But these days, it's a little different uh, because I'm a fan of my time. And I realize that time is very important. You know, it's a commodity that you never get back. So you have to focus your time and energy and, uh, you know, focus in the right area. Um, uh, you know, it, if you want a certain result in your life, um, you want to, you know, uh, sit down sometime, get clarity on what it is that you want, and then rather than disperse your focus and energy all over the place, uh, anal that, you know, just sort of uh, laser focus it to a certain area, and that's what I'm doing, you know, um, ever since I joined Empower, since December, I've decided that, you know, no matter what, I am going to just sort of tunnel focus. Uh, into this business that I'm going to make you know a lot of money in this business I'm going to build a massive team and uh, and I'm not going to let anything stop me from doing that now um, every year though I have you know these events that I go to every year uh, for personal development purposes I spend a lot of time as well reading and a lot of time uh, on um, you know just sort of developing myself and what I've been able to do um, what I've been able to do until this point is, you know, um, is get to a point where you know I feel like it's uh, it, I feel like it's sufficient. Like I've 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 studied enough. I've I've learned enough. Obviously, I'm not trying to say that uh, you know I know it all, right? But I'm just saying it's about time to just sort of focus and do the things that are going to give me the results that I want. So, for example, this is an example. Uh, what what is your focus? And you know, I'm, I've been asking myself, what is my focus? You know, what what do I really want? What's the outcome? 
And uh, you know, for the last five years, I've been sort of my my really main intention has to be has been developing myself as a person. So I read books uh, in personal development, self help. I uh, listen to audio programs in that kind of uh, area, and I go to events um, for those purposes, right? And but there's a part, a conscious part of me where I really want to make a lot of money on the internet as well. But funny enough. I didn't focus much on, you know, uh, going to internet marketing events um, or taking actions towards building my marketing skills. Right. So it was a little, I was a little, you know, I was a little uh, off track in the things that I wanted to do. Right. But uh, since December, since joining Empower, you know, that that focus has changed. I'll just uh, tell you a quick story right now. Um, you know, I've got. <laughs> Uh, I'm a strawberry farmer, right? And uh, you know, we uh, we've been farming over in Queensland for the last seven years. Uh, we've got quite a sizable farm, and um, obviously, when we started, we were struggling as as you know everybody with their startup business. Uh, today, we're doing quite well. Uh, I've got people outside working. We believe in uh, applying systems, so we've got systems out there where people pick, and uh, you know, they this. Is, Everything systematic. They come outside. There's um, there's a scaling process there. There's a quality check process. There's cages they, where they place their strawberries in, and those cages get picked up, go inside, and then the shed take care of the rest and stuff like that. But recently, I've just got I've just got a guy um, that just started with us. He's uh, there's actually two guys that started with us. They're both 22. One is like um, one is like. One is like a 28-year-old, right? And the other one is like a 19-year-old. Uh, you know, he's like he's like he's like still very young. His 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 mental is still very young. So one guy, I could teach him everything, and he would get it like that, right? Because he's laser focused, and he's more mature. One guy, he, every time I uh, you know I tell him something, uh, he's like, oh yeah yeah I know I know. And uh, and he explained to me what he thinks I'm, I'm trying to tell him, and and it frustrates the hell out of me because every time I say something, he'll be like, "Yeah, I know, I know, I know." <laughs> and then I had to stop him, and I say, uh, "You know, I know is the worst. Um, you know, is the most dangerous words in the dictionary because when you say that you know, you're actually stopping knowledge from going in, right? You're putting up a barrier. You're not allowing." Knowledge to go in, and so, um, so once I've told him this, he sort of, uh, you know, he sort of uh, catch himself every now and then when I tell him something. Um, you know, he's like, he's like, I know, and he's like, oh, and he, he, now he's catching himself because he's aware of it, and um, and uh, so, and another thing that he has right that uh, that is also frustrating to me is um, not only that. Uh, He's saying I know, but the next problem would be he's not allowing me to finish my thoughts before jumping in and trying to catch what I mean. So just 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 think about this, right? You've got uh, you've got uh, many people with different perspectives, right? And you've got, uh, for example, if I say a table, right? What color table are you, uh, are you thinking of, Emily? I'm thinking of uh, my dinner table that I'm on right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, I can't envision exactly what that looks like. I've never seen it. But when I say a table, I'm thinking of a white plastic table, right? And so here's a guy that I'm trying to teach him stuff. I'm trying to train him to become a better quality checker. Every time I'm telling him something. Um, he's always catching my thought, as opposed to letting me finish, and sort of really trying to understand what it is that I'm trying to say. My 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 perception, my perspective, or my meaning of what I'm trying to say, right? So that he can follow the exact instruction of what I do. And I see a lot of people do this in the industry when they come online. You know, they they go join a program, and they they listen and they watch exactly the training. But they go and do something different, right? Because they think they they, they can do better, right? And uh, so you know, I I I I'm just really frustrated with this guy. I'm thinking, you know, 
how can I help this kid, right? And uh, and I gave him uh, an example. So for example, you know, if I asked him, you know, if you want to make a million dollars, and here's a guy that makes a hundred million dollars per year, and he gives you a step, you know, like A, do this, B, do this, C, do this, right? Would it be smart to follow his free instructions so that you can get the exact outcome that he's got? Or should you listen to that and say, oh, well, I can do better and go off and do what you think is right? And again, he, he heard that and he was like, uh, you know, all right, yeah, I understand what you mean. And so he's improving now. Um, you know, he's starting to be more coachable. So he was actually wasn't coachable in the past. And so, um, and the reason I'm talking about this is because there's a lot of people that you think you're coachable right now, you're actually looking for advice. Like, I mean, a lot of you guys watching this are probably exactly like us on that panel. You know, you're focusing on personal development. You want a uh, better life for yourself, your family, better future, right? You want to increase your income. You want to obviously relax and let the system, the internet, work for you on automation, making you money while you sleep or on vacation. And um, and just so you're out there, you're looking. You're looking for information. But a lot of people, and myself included in the past, and Alan was talking about his past as well, you know, buying many courses, joining many different programs, and, and sort of really actually don't take those things seriously because the the creators of those programs, I'm sure like I bought like a ton of courses as well, courses from John Reese and Frank Hearn, Mike the same, like Alan mentioned as well. But I, the thing was I didn't follow the instruction. I thought I was coachable, but I wasn't that coachable, obviously, right? Because if I was coachable, if Mike said A, B, C, and D, then I would have, you know, I would be, um, you know, doing exactly that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just went off a little bit here. I um, more about myself, right? Um, I mean, basically, I, I I come online in 2009 because I wanted to. Um, I wanted, you know, uh, I sort of I, really I wanted a better life for my family too. Even though we've got a pretty good life here. Uh, it, it's we've got a business that is making good cash flow. The problem, though, is the industry that we're in. You know the um, you know there there we've got systems in place, but the problem is um, we just we just we still need to be we still need to be there on the farm. And uh, I'm just hearing some feedback from Emily. I'm just gonna stop that for now. So, so I was just saying that the reason that you know I'm, I'm actually online is because I've seen uh, you know how hard it is that we have to work in our uh, business, our farm, right? We've tried to put systems in there so that we can relax more. We've got people working and doing things, but we still need to be there. Now, the one factor that we could we can't control is obviously the elements, and that's one of the um, you know one one of the main factor that could really destroy us, and uh, you know. In, in, but you know, I believe the internet is probably the best, have the best business model if you compare it to any business offline, right? I mean, there's no physical um, work involved except for sitting at your computer. There's no heavy lifting. There's no, there's no, there, you, there's a lot of time leverage. You've got, uh, you've got, and you know, if you have a, a, a brick and mortar business, right? You got to worry about employees. You got to put up cameras to. Um, make sure they don't uh, they don't do do thing that it's against the shop policy, and then you've got uh, signage you have to you know you have to put up. You're probably paying rent, overheads, and all that kind of thing. Whereas with an online business, um, you can really you can save a lot of money. You can put all of that away, and just focusing on just marketing, especially in this business that we're in, especially with the power network, uh, everything is done for you. You don't have to deal with customer support. There's no overheads, uh, no hosting, no no graphic design, no copywriting skills needed. All you really got to do is is plug in and have a business that's ready to go for you. Um, yeah, I I um, Alan, that's that's pretty much all that I I can think of right now to share. Um, I'm gonna pass the mic back to you. Well, awesome. Thanks, Tim. I mean, you know, Emily and 
Tam, you know, you guys share awesome stories and really, uh, yeah, just share with the viewers that, you know, that this business you know, really allow us that once we really put ourselves uh, into a very committed state, a very uh, and a passion, you know, actually uh, being able to, to help other people. I mean, that's where we really see the breakthroughs in ourselves. But the reason why we're doing these hangouts consistently, yeah, obviously one is to help ourselves grow as leaders, but secondly is we're actually continuously providing massive value to the marketplace, right? I've always learned that money is simply a transfer of energy and the more massive value you provide to the marketplace, then that's how money you know, will start flowing into you easily and effortlessly. So, um, I mean, uh, I guess, you know, we can, uh, you know, maybe just ask you guys a question is, uh, is that, you know, uh, with Empower Network, um, obviously, you know, you guys share with us that Empower Network has really changed uh, the way, you know, or changed your life, you know, compared to what you experienced before. But my question to you guys is that, um, Forget about Empower Network. I mean, what? Uh, where do you see? Where do you see yourself? Uh, you know, in beyond ninety days. Like, you know, do you have a, a goal? Let's say, you know, in a year or two or five years. Uh, you know, where where do you see yourself? I mean, we, so we kind of gone beyond ninety days now, but kind of you know more like in five years. And where do you see yourself in this earth? I mean, we yesterday we had an awesome, uh, awesome uh, hangout with uh, Devin. He talked about that you know most people only live uh, was it two thousand and five hundred was was that was that Tim twenty five thousand days? Yeah, like twenty five thousand days, right? I mean, I mean, um, I mean, just thinking about that, I mean, just kind of motivate myself to get to work every single day because seriously, you never know what's gonna happen tomorrow, right? Yesterday I share. Uh, you know, a, um, a pretty sad story about what happened to my to my family and friends, right? You know, who got in their car accident. So if you guys missed that, you gotta go go watch your replay. And also, Devin also had a friend that's kind of uh, had a friend that also gone through a, a car accident, and, she, and she, I think she's still in the in a tra in the in in the in a coma right now. I mean, I mean, gosh, you know, we have to really embrace our our you know what's happening every single day. You know, just embrace that moment because you never really know. What's gonna to happen tomorrow? And, and like Ems, you know, like Ems, you know, she is having um, a wedding on, on, you know, in uh, in a few months. I mean, you know, I mean, you gotta really start, uh, you know, really start embracing every single day, and also start taking care of all your loved ones, right? So I believe truly that the Empower Network is is an awesome vehicle to help us break free, right? I mean, seriously, if you guys don't get into Empower Network, I mean, where will you guys be? Are you guys gonna still continue doing the exact same thing you guys are doing every single day? You know, still going to that job you hate, still coming back, you know, dead tired, and then you know maybe kiss your kids to bed, and next day, you know, you're getting you're doing the exact same thing over and over again. So I mean, I'm so blessed to have found Empower Network. But I mean, in five years, I mean, I see myself really just enjoying and just you know living. The live the life of my dreams. I really just go, you know, not in addition to go traveling. I mean, traveling is good. Um, I mean, to be honest, you know, you cannot travel, you know, the, the whole year. I mean, it's get boring, right? Uh, but I mean, in five years, I really see myself actually just going, maybe going around the world, actually um, doing a lot of charity work, or even while I build my business, really just on the on the ground helping people, actually start impacting people. I know Tam has an ultimate goal of becoming a monk, so maybe I can kind of pass the floor to him where he can share with us, you know, his ultimate goal of becoming the richest monk in the world. So Tam, uh, why don't you uh, quickly share with us uh, that story, and I know we are getting um, to the bottom of the hour, and you guys are maybe going to jump on the Empire call, but I believe you guys have to wait a little bit because Tam is going to share a very awesome story, which you guys can miss right now. Awesome. Uh I, I, I noticed when I passed the mic back to you just before that um, that uh, you know I didn't actually answer the question where I expected <laughs> to be in the now. <laughs> um, I think I thank you for asking that again and pass it back to me. But um, when we when we started this uh, hangouts, right? Um, I didn't expect to be in the position I am now. I, I just feel so much more powerful. Uh, speaking and being in front of the camera. I'm sure my teammates here, uh, Alan and Emily, they feel the same. And there seemed to be a theme inside of Empower Network 
where there's a 90-day thing, whether it be blogging or making videos or hangouts, whatever it is, there's a 90-day uh, time frame where transformation will occur. And I can tell you, within the first 30 days of this hangouts, there has been huge transformation coming inside of me. Right? Within the thir first 30 days, I felt more confident speaking, I felt more connected to the people, the viewers, and I felt more e effective when I'm on this call. And along the way, because our intention was to become better communicators, along the way, we were given so many things that was help, you know, because we wanted it, uh, because we were looking, the universe kind of aligned, you know, the universe saw that we were clear of what we wanted. And so it, it gave us what we needed to, to, to get there. And along the way, you know, we, uh, we learned many things from many guest speakers. At the same time, um, personally for me, I go out there and I, I'm looking at uh, watching other people's hangouts, listening to the inner circle, listening to all the products that we have, and sort of pick out little nuggets that I can use for these hangouts. And then came, you know, Miami. Uh, we had to go there, and David Wood he gave us, you know, a brilliant, uh, you know, brilliant lesson on on storytelling, and uh, and um, you know, indirect suggestions and all that kind of stuff, which was really cool. Exactly what we needed. But for for me though, um, this this is only um, this is only like uh, we've got about thirty days to go. We're, we're three, uh, two quarter of the way there. And I feel like this, you know, like I'm definitely not the same person when I started. And 90 days from now, I definitely am not expecting to be the same person because I'm just going to keep on pushing forward. That's my mentality. That's, that's who I am. I'm just going to keep on pushing forward and keep on moving because, you know, my, and thanks to David Wood, thanks to Miami, and he's got my, my intentions really, really clear. And uh, just a quick recap of what it is, and, and so you can understand what Alan was talking about when he was talking about the world's richest monk, right? Um, one of the less, one of the uh, uh, um, activity that we had to do, and it was our homework, is that we had to, uh, you know, uh, we had to go through these uh, these uh, these questionnaires that towards the end of these questionnaires, we're going to get a clear intention. And you have to uh, spend time and sort of do it through slowly because you're not actually asking your conscious, but you're really tapping into your unconscious and get questions from deep within. And that's the only way how you, you know, how you know where, you, where you're at and what you want. You have to tap into your unconscious. And so I took this very, very seriously. It took me five hours to complete. Uh, I think I slept at around 3.30 in the morning. And, uh, but I'm glad to get it done. Uh, one of the questions was, you know, wh why are you doing what you're doing now and what do you want from it? And then, you know, whatever was the answer was, you give it. So mine was like initially was, you know, I want to become a better speaker. I wanted to inspire people. I wanted to do this and do this. And then the second question was, when you, when you, um, when you get that, right, what else can you gain from it or something like that along that line? Um, once you've gained that, what is that going to do for you now? Or what is that going to do for you? And then, you know, that digs deeper. And we get, we get about six questions of that and it digs deep and deep and deep and deep and deep. And I came, my final answer was mom. And uh, I'm still in a state of confusion, what that really is. But I can tell you this, a, a quick story of why I think that this might be the case, right? So I think it was I think it was around uh, I think I was around 19 years old. Uh, during this time, I was a very uh, I was a very wild kid. You know, you go through times in your life when you just you just want to explore and you wanted to play because you've had you know t 12 years of education and now you you feel like you're free. You feel like you're an adult. You have just got your license. You know, you've got an ID. You can go clubbing and now it's like you've got total freedom. And I guess I was going through that stage where I was just experimenting with a lot of things. And by, by doing this, um, I put my family through a lot of, you know, headaches and heartaches. Um, 
they were pretty much trying to reel me in, you know, trying to point me in the right direction. But I, at that point, was just, you know, looking to explore. I wanted to just, I felt like, you know, I was invincible. Every time I hop on the road, I would be going at like 100 k's per hour, you know, <laughs> on whatever road. And we, you know, we were hooning and, you know, whatever whatever words you can think of, of uh, you know, that was, you know, a hoon or like a street punk, whatever it was, right? I was that, you know, and I remember one one time my mom was like, hey, Tam, you know, be careful when you go out late at night, you know, there's people out there and it's dangerous and, um, you know, it was funny, I turned to my mom and I said, mom, the people that you're warning uh, me about, right, I, I'm actually that person, right, <laughs> so cause we, we, we don't really yeah, hang out in gangs and drink and smoke and use substances and, and it was really bad, so I've done a lot of bad things, but, and, and I want to point out this thing here, um, you know, I've I've had that many car crashes, right? Because I've 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 got such a hard head, right? I wasn't listening to the law, I wasn't listening to my parents or anyone. I have such a hard head, and I wanted to show off so bad that I've actually been through like about six or seven car accidents. And each one of this time, each one of these cars, I never buy, I never pay for, and it was always my parents that bought me a new car because they love me, and they would uh, pay for the damages, they would pay. Uh, for the 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 the, you know, the charges and everything like that, right? And and you know how you've done something for so long and so much, but people never come and sort of grill at you, and you just feel you almost feel guilty because you've done it so many times. Well, what happened was, as that was leading forward, right, to the last time when my mom again, she 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 really wanted me to stick with the family, I. I came back, decided to work with everyone, and then she's like, "Look, we're gonna get, we're gonna fix you up. We're gonna get you a nice car, right?" And again, it was a really nice car, and I think it was like nearly twenty thousand dollars or something like that, and and it was all mine. And uh, you know, at this time, I was like, I was like behaving, you know. But there were times when I'm still trying to push the speed of this car, right? Uh, because my friends are with me, and I want to show up. And I remember one time I was just like, it was night, it was really dark. And, uh, and uh, I think we were like, we were, we were, we were uh, you know, we were under substances, right? And I was, I was like speeding up on this road really fast. It was getting up to 120. You know, I can see a car in front, car light in front. I, I, sh I, I, I um, you know, slid past them, and then another car was in front. I slid past that, you know, feeling really good as I am accelerating more, changing gear, accelerating and accelerating, accelerating, and then I, 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 I switched to the right lane uh, to avoid another car. And what happened was this road became a bend like this, and I was like, oh sh crap! And then uh, I hit the brake and I turned. And obviously the car lost it. I did like 360, all sorts of different slides, and the car hit this brick wall so big, right? Uh, it made a huge noise. And like at that time for me it was like a blackout because I, I, I planted my face inside of an airbag and uh, and then it was over. Like I sat I sat back. But at one point before I hit that that bag, everything sort of slowed down for me. Right? My whole my whole life sort of, you know, flash in front of me. I was like, oh my God, not again, right? And I'm thinking about my mom, thinking about my family. What are they going to think of me this time, right? And, um, and boom, everything blacked out. I was, I'm still thinking about that. And then I, I sat back in my seat and I'm just sitting there. I'm just going, oh my God. Uh, I have no idea what to say, but I wasn't like, I wasn't like erratic. My, my heart rate wasn't like high because I'm on the substance. I was very mellow. I was like sitting there. Anyway, I stepped out of the car. It was a huge wreck. There was a big hole in the in the wall, and there, you can see, you know, bricks everywhere, and bricks were uh, smashed into the house and stuff like that. The windows were broken, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" And I just sat down and I started to think. It was like everything around me sort of got quiet, even though I could see in, uh, through the corner of my eye that. There were a lot of people everywhere started coming, you know, all over the place. Cars were stopping and stuff like that, but there was no noise. I was just sitting there, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking, what am I doing? You know, what have I done? You know, I mean, time and time again, am I really that 
like, is that really, is this really me? Is this who I am? You know, like, I just constantly don't listen, right? And at that point, I was just, I was just, um, I was just blaming myself. And, uh, you know, I, I was just, I was just at a point where I'm just, I hate myself more than anyone because of what I'm putting my family through right now. And, uh, and I sat there and, you know, people saw, saw me and they, they didn't know what to do because I was so mellow, so calm, right? And I looked up at people, I'm looking around, people are just coming forward. And um, one man stepped to me and he's like, son, are you all right? Son, are you all right? Stand up, you know, are you all right? And I looked at him and I said, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. And the first thing I asked him was, um, you know, do you, you know, do you know who the owner of the house is? And, and he looked around at a few people, you know, that was crowding behind me. You know, there was a couple of old senior ladies and he's a senior man as well. And he's looking at me and he's looking at this lady and he's like, son, why do you want to know uh, who the owner of the house is? And then uh, I looked up, you know, and, uh, and I just said, you know, I, 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 well, I just, you know, ran into this brick wall. Uh, I just he's probably really angry at me right now. I just want to say that I'm sorry. I, I didn't need to hit his wall. Uh, and, and the guy looked at me, right? And he said, and this is the thing that sort of changed my life, uh, why I'm here today and I'm doing what I'm doing. Because he looked at me and he said, he said, son, the most important thing is you are okay, right? And through all I've done, towards my family, towards, you know, people and, you know, hardship I put people through. Here's a stranger who, who doesn't know me. And he put my life before everything else. And I sat there and I'm looking at him and, you know, again, tears fell down my face. And I was just like, really, man? Really? You're not going to, you're not going to like yell at me? You know, you're not going to tell me I'm a, you know, I'm a dumbass. You're not going to tell me, you know, uh, that I should grow up. You care? You care that I, uh, you know, I'm okay. And uh, yeah, and a lot of people, like the other ladies were like, yes, I'm, don't worry about that. You know, the main thing is you're okay. You just need to stay awake, okay? You need to stay awake. And so they started to take care of me. But I, I was still thinking, you know, I'm not worth this 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 uh, this much care and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So the ambulance came, they took me away and such and that. And uh, yeah, I mean, from that, you know, I... I started to have, you know, this guy really inspired me to, he really is now like, he's, 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 he's an idol for me. He's somebody that I want to be, right? Um, I want to do that. I want to do that to a lot of people because there might be a lot of people out there that are going through hard times that are, that are constantly, you know, being a wreck for society. But you imagine if you have a bigger heart and you say, son, it's okay. You know, the most important thing is you're okay, right? Um, that could change lives and definitely change my life. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's why I'm seeking to grow and learn so that, you know, I can do that to people and I can help people. And, uh, and I guess, I, you know, that's probably where the monk part is. And obviously, the, the, the money part is, um, you know, we all know that we need money, right? Uh, in order to do any big and great things, you need money. Uh, money is not the root of all evil, in case you think that, right? It depends on who is actually uh, holding it, right? It uh, depends on whose hands is it, it's in. So I, um, yeah, that's pretty much, you know, my story, um, getting to the end of it. And uh, um, I don't know, Alan, was that a sufficient answer? <laughs> Uh, definitely. I mean, that was an awesome story. I actually never heard that kind of story, you know, from you before. So that's actually uh, pretty awesome. So maybe M, do you have any any last words uh, before you know we wrap up today? Yeah, you know what, guys, if you if if uh, Tam's story resonated with you, I mean, and you know you want to be able to help others and inspire others, uh, just like he has, just like Alan has, just like I have, and you want to help. You want to help those who, who you want to have, you want to feel like you have a home. Well, Empower definitely rec welcomes anybody who has any type of background, whatever your background is. As a matter of fact, we are not here to judge. Right now, what matters is where you are now and what is the next step you're going to take in order to take 
better control of your life and your future. So um, just just you know before before uh, you go or before you you X out. Um, just remember that you are in control of your own destiny and it's a matter of what you want to do with it. So um, back to you, Alan, and thank you, Tam, for sharing that awesome story. Well, awesome. Hey, thanks, Emily, and thanks, uh, Tam. I mean, yeah, I mean, you guys really shared some awesome story tonight. Uh, and those who are still watching this right now, you know, you might resonate with what Emily said or what I said, what Tam said, right? But the only thing you have to do right now is look into your situation. And ask yourself, am I satisfied? Am I satisfied with my life right now? And if the answer is no, then you have to make a change right now by clicking the link below, okay? And finally, making yourself powerful again by clicking the link below, so that you can finally um, plug into the system and start learning and applying the skills you learn to change your future. So. You hear us say it all over and over again, right? Is that you know you have to start believing yourself, right? We want to believe in you before you start believing yourself. So make a decision right now. Click the link below and make a decision to go in or go all in, and obviously, hopefully, see you guys in Denver next month. So guys, uh, uh, you know we are reaching to the bottom of the hour, and we do have an Empower Hour call right now. So we hope to see you guys at the top. Take care. Have a good night.